congratulations, folks. Uh, we are wrapping up our uh, Unit 5 on quadratics. It's been a uh, very fast-paced uh, uh, unit here. We've uh, done a lot of stuff since we first started this unit uh, with multiplying polynomials and then factoring them, and now we've been graphing them and talking about parabolas. Uh, we've done a lot of stuff over the last couple of weeks. So anyway, uh, what I want to do um, today and tomorrow is kind of conclude all of this by using these quadratic equations, these polynomials, in some application problems. Now, um, today we are just going to uh, do some of the simpler ones, but before we get into some examples, um, just a note that uh, quadratic equations, very much like linear equations, uh, quadratic equations arise naturally when we solve all types of uh, problems in context. You, know, look, you can look at some of the pictures here, and obviously, you know, anytime you think of the visual shape of a ball being thrown up in the air or a basketball being shot or like the, fire, the water from the fire hose, okay, all those things obviously make a parabola shape. Okay, but th there's also other types of uh, formulas you'll be given <clears throat> with economics and whatnot that also are quadratic functions. Um, and we'll be doing some application problem with those. Now today, I don't want to get into anything too uh, detailed today. I just want to do two examples that are what I call the basic type. In other words, these aren't really wrapped in some contextual situation. It's more just kind of number theory. You know, find me two consecutive integers that, da -da -da -da, whatever. Um, so let's, let's do some of these basic ones today. And then um, I won't give you any homework on this tonight. We'll come back tomorrow and do some of the uh, more challenging, fun ones. Okay, uh, let's start with example number one. Uh, the product of two consecutive even integers is 48. I want you to find me all sets of these integers that satisfy this description. Now, we've done consecutive integer problems before, okay? So when we were doing them before, it was the sum of consecutive integers, all right? Now notice we are doing the product. That totally changes the way we solve the problem, okay? Now, remember when we do consecutive number problems, first thing we want to do is we want to identify our integers uh, with an expression. So if x is our first value, and we're, here we're doing consecutive even, so my next integer would be x plus 2, all right? Because I want consecutive even integers. So now that I've got my two expressions, I'm going to write an equation. So I'm going to multiply these two expressions together because it says we're doing product. So x multiplied by x plus 2, and it says that product is supposed to be equal to 48. Now, I know that we already probably know what those two values are, but I'm, I'm choosing one that uh, you already know the answer to, so because I want to focus on the process, okay? The process is very, very important, because you'll see on the next one, it's not going to be so obvious, all right? All right, uh, to go about solving a problem like this, first thing we need to do is get rid of the parentheses, which would require us to distribute. So x times x would be x squared, x times 2 would be 2x, and this is still equal to 48. Now remember, any time we see an equation that we're asked to solve that has an exponent, the only way you can solve it, okay, is to set it equal to 0, all right? If this did not have an x squared, then it would just be a linear equation and we could easily solve for x. But when there's an x squared in the equation, you have to set it equal to zero, and then we could either factor or graph, okay? So I'm going to uh, subtract 48 from both sides here, and then it will be set equal to zero, and I will have a trinomial, x squared plus 2x minus 48, all right? Now, at this point, you could graph that if you want. It's going to be parabola that opens up, shift to the left a little bit, but my y-intercept is going to be down at negative 48. But I, I could find the roots of it, okay? It would cross the uh, x-axis at two integer values, so I could do it that way. In fact, I think it's great to do it that way uh, after we've gotten the answer to kind of just double-check so you understand what's happening. But um, you'll get something that looks like that. But uh, let's go ahead and factor it, okay? And then we'll get out the calculator in a moment. So to factor this, it's a trinomial, there is no GCF, so I'm going to find factors of negative 48 that add up to my positive 2, uh, which means I know I'm going to do 6 and 8. One of them's got to be negative because the product's negative. The sum has to be a positive 2, so I think I'll make my 6 negative. Does that look right? That gives me a positive 2. Okay, so that means that this uh, trinomial factors 
I can go ahead and use my shortcut. No need to four term it because my x squared doesn't have a coefficient. So I'm going to have a group of x minus 6, and I'm going to have a group of x plus a. And you can FOIL that and double check that it does equal the trinomial above. Now remember the zero product property says that uh, if this product is zero, then either the group of x minus 6 has to equal zero, or the group of x plus 8 has to equal zero. Well, you're looking for the value of x that will make each of those groups equal zero. So here, I'll add 6 to both sides, and x will equal 6. And over here, I'll subtract 8 from both sides, and x will equal negative 8. Now, the next step is the essential step. This is where people mess up. They go, okay, the answer is 6 and negative 8. No, it's not. Folks, 6 times negative 8 does not equal a positive 48. That is not what this answer is saying, okay? Now, let's talk about what the answer is, what these values are telling us, okay? What it is saying is this. If x is 6, okay, just looking at this one answer right here. If x is 6, right, then I know x plus 2, if x is 6, then 6 plus 2, x plus plus 2 would be 8. So one of my solutions would be 6 and 8. Now notice I did not write those in a uh, parentheses. This is not an ordered pair. You're telling me that x could be 6, therefore x plus 2 would be 8. So 6 and 8 is one possible solution because 6 times 8 is 48. All right. Now, you may say, what do I do with this negative 8 over here? Well, now you come over here and you say, all right, well, what if x is negative 8? Well, if x is negative 8, then x plus 2, or negative 8 plus 2, would be negative 6. So that actually gives me another set of answers, which would be negative 6 and negative 8. And you can check it. If I multiply those together, do I get a positive 48? Yes, I do. So in both of these cases, I get a positive 48 when I multiply them together, which was what the problem asked me to find. So you see why it's worded in such a way where it says find all sets of these numbers that satisfy this description? That's because I could have positive 6 and 8, or I could have a negative 8 and negative 6. Both of those sets would work, okay? Now, to check this on your calculator, what's going to happen is you would graph the original parabola. Oops, not that one, the one that said equal to 0 right here. And you would see that this root is at negative 8, and this root is at, at oops, positive 6, which, again, you would then have to say, well, if x is negative 8, then I would need a negative 6 to make one pair okay, of consecutive even integers that multiply to give me 48. And over here, if x is 6, then x plus 2 would be positive 8, and, again, that's another pair of integers that would have a product of 48. Okay? All right, make sure you show all that work on your paper. All right, that's probably the most basic type. Let's do another one. Look at number two. Find three consecutive positive integers such that the product of the first two is 22 less than 11 times the third. Whoa, a lot of information. Let's break it down. Three consecutive positive integers. These are not even or odd, so I'm just going to make a list. X, X plus 1, and X plus 2. Those are my consecutive positive integers. All right, now let's write our equation. The product, we're multiplying, of the first two. So if I multiply x times x plus 1, this is equals 22 less than, so I'm subtracting 22 from something, subtracting 22 from 11 times the third. So 11 times the third is x plus 2. So there's our equation. Okay? All right, now let's multiply all this out, pretty it up, and uh, we're probably going to have to set this equal to zero because we'll have a quadratic equation. All right, so let's go ahead and distribute. So x squared plus x on the left. On the right, I'll have 11x plus 22, and then I'll recopy my minus 22. Oh, well, this works out nice because these just cancel out. All right, and now to set this equal to zero, I need to subtract 11x from both sides. And we'll have, what, x squared minus, uh, this was 1x minus 11x. That would be a minus 10x. And I don't have anything over here anymore because we subtracted the 11x to cancel it out. And the 22s went away. So there we go. Oh, that's an easy one to factor. It's not a difference of squares, but there is a GCF, right? 
So my GCF would be X. So if I take an X out, I'm left with a group of X minus 10. And again, using the zero product property, okay, I would let X equal zero. And then I would let X minus 10 equal to zero. This one would, of course, have to be solved. And X would equal 10. Now, let's go read the question. Find three consecutive positive integers. Positive would be important here. Such that the product, okay. So this answer of zero, I'm going to ignore because zero is not a positive number, okay? Technically, if you put it in for x, just hold on for a second. If I put it in for x, this would be one and this would be two. Technically, it would satisfy the problem. The problem says that the product of the first two, zero, is 22 less than 11 times the third. Well, 11 times two is 22 minus 22 is zero. So it actually does satisfy the criteria in the problem, but it asks me to find three consecutive positive integers, and when if I let x be zero, then that's not right because zero is not positive. Sometimes when we do these problems, one of your answers, if you get two roots, sometimes one of your roots or solutions, um, you will ignore. It's called an extraneous root, okay? It doesn't meet the criteria. So we just focus on the other root, okay? So we're going to focus on the fact that x is 10. So if I go up here and I say, all right, well, if x is 10, the next number is 11 and the next number is 12. Well, let's see if 10, 11, and 12 meet our criteria, okay? Problem says that if I multiply the first times the second, it should equal 11 times the third, minus 22. Let's see if that happens. 10 times 11 is 110. Okay. What's this? 132 minus 22, which is 110. Okay. So these three numbers are the ones we're looking for. Okay. All right. Pretty cool stuff there. Now, uh, we're going to stop there for today. I think that's enough. Uh, we'll come back tomorrow and get into some more uh, harder ones that are more in a contextual situation. But I just wanted to kind of give you an introduction today of kind of where we're going with this. And um, you know, again, feel free to go back and watch the video uh, to complete your notes if needed. And uh, have a great day.